Coming up, some birds take up residence in the walls. Oh, birdies. I try and spin some very stuck wheels. Smooth as butter. And the paintwork starts to take shape. <laughs> so the first task at hand here is basically just to get the whole front of the engine clean. As you can see, that whole front timing case cover and the upper timing case covers absolutely destroyed in crud, dirt, oil. Um, I mean, the valve covers have been leaking for God only knows how long. Um, and if you can imagine every single bit of dirt and sand and dust that's dropped down on the engine over the last 30 odd years uh, has basically ended up in this area. So all this needs to be cleaned off. I'm using a mixture of a, a very effective degreaser, as you can see, just a toothbrush, um, and then just general wipe down, it gets it pretty clean. Probably steam clean would do a great job here, but uh, I'm just using a bit of good old elbow grease and it should come up like new. Doesn't seem to be washers other than nuts. Ah, oh, great. That's that broken bushing. That's all of them removed. Now for the moment of truth. surprisingly clean and the other side of the cover also quite clean a bit of sludge here at the front let's take a closer look okay so this is a close-up obviously of 
the left side cam and I am delighted to say that this is in excellent condition um, the oil is obviously very dark so this hasn't been changed in a while but and I genuinely haven't checked these yet these are the four infamous banjo bolts um, and I even have to look up what a banjo bolt essentially was what a banjo bolt is all it is it's basically a hollowed out screw or bolt and uh, so a fluid actually runs through the bolt okay so this is your uh, your cam lubricating line across the top oil is basically pumped up um, through each of these banjo bolts into the actual oil rail and then the oil rail actually drops the oil straight down onto the cam and um, the problem is these bolts can actually back out and um, because they're only put in a very kind of low torque level um, and I haven't actually checked these so the problem is these can back out and if these back out um, even just a small bit it basically blocks the hole so oil can't flow through the hole therefore oil doesn't get into the rail therefore the actual cam doesn't get lubricated so that is what the major issue is with these so you can tell if they're loose basically by can you undo it with your finger that one's tight I've lost some light here Jesus Christ that one's tight that's tight yes right that is fantastic news I am absolutely delighted with that that's always a big worry with buying one of these engines have these backed out at any point and if they have um, you're going to see excessive wear on your cam and it needs to be replaced um, or I think you can actually hone them um, back to kind of like an original shape um, whereby the valves and the amount of lift um, is retained but um, obviously it's way better if you don't have to do any of that so um, that's fantastic so I'm actually going to remove these oil rails uh, clean them up uh, reinstall them with the correct torque amount on these actual uh, banjo bolts and then what people do basically is yeah you can thread lock these but basically I'm not, I don't think there's a thread lock on the market that can actually withstand uh, the heat um, that these actually endure and no matter what they can actually back out so there's a few different methods for keeping these uh, permanently in place um, and one of the most popular methods is actually drilling a small hole straight through the head of the bolt and then passing a wire through it okay so you link this bolt to this bolt in such a way that if this one was to loosen you're actually tightening this one so as a result both of them are held rock solid so you basically wrap a wire around this the wire leads all the way down here and then you wrap the wire through this so and then you do the same on this pair here um, I've seen another method as well which is probably the method I'm, I'm going to use you can get little copper tabs that basically just bend around the oil bar here or the oil rail and uh, kind of uh, just butt up against the side I'm after losing more light again and they basically butt up against the side of this uh, nut to stop it rotating so I think I might use that method because um, I think it's more than sufficient um, so let's take a look at this gasket it's actually still quite pliable I'm going to remove this very carefully so as not to introduce any dirt into this area of the engine I think typically when you're working on engines the valve cover gasket is normally quite recent because it's relatively accessible and it's probably been replaced a number of times over the life of the engine so this may have been done not so long ago although it's not in the best of condition relatively pliable but obviously that needs to be replaced so we'll start now on the right side bank hopefully we get as lucky with this one as we did with the first We got a smart attic, huh? Hey, we got a smart guy. <laughs> gotcha. Okay.
Easy does it. Okay, the gas is coming with it this time. I want to keep that in place. There's that pan. That's much cleaner than the other one. And how are our bolts? Tight. 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 Oh, look at that. Holy shit. Holy shit indeed. Look how loose that bolt is. Wow. Now that was loose. Yet the cams look absolutely immaculate. Now, it's hard to know, but depending on the position of the bolt, you could still have oil spilling around this area. Uh, and pressure from this bolt may well get as far as here. So there may have been, and like God only knows when it happened, so it could have happened quite recently either. Um, yeah, so everything looks really good there, but that is my untrained eye. That was seriously loose. I mean, that was, I mean, probably seven or eight revolutions. That's the kind of position they're sitting in. Well, we're checking anyway. There's a very small bit of sludge at the bottom of the head, which I'm not actually sure is on the opposite side. Let me have a quick look. Yeah, probably a similar amount. There's a few pools of oil kind of blocking things up. It's probably a little bit cleaner on this side. It'd be interesting to compare those lobes on this side to the ones on the opposite side. Yeah, so I was examining this bolt a little bit closer. As you can see, there's actually a small little washer on it, and there's actually washers installed on all of them. And I've actually seen some reports online of guys saying that the washers were only present on some of their bolts, which is very strange. And some guys have actually found the bolts backed out and just lying in the bottom of the pan, which is absolutely crazy. I mean, that's just cataclysmic kind of stuff. Um, so that is the actual banjo bolt there. As you can see, there's a hole in the middle and the bolt itself is actually hollow. So the oil flows straight through the bolt. Um, and again, I'm just paranoid here about any, any kind of wear or damage on the actual camshaft. But just looking at these, I was actually a little bit worried straight away because there's a little less, a bit of a less shine basically off, off these lobes here. Whereas there's a bit more of a shine on these ones. So they're a little bit duller. I'm not sure if that's showing there. You can see how shiny this one is. And I was thinking, oh, maybe, you know, there's increased wear on these, but if you just come up here, I mean, these ones are just as dull uh, and these oil rails are absolutely fine. Um, I'm just looking below at the actual valve springs down below. I mean, everything is actually very well lubricated. There's oil absolutely everywhere. So again, I suppose this all boils down to, I think the oil was spilling out of this um, and in this general area. Now, nowhere near as uniform as it probably should be, but, and... Again, if this one had backed out as well, I'd, we've maybe been getting no oil at all in this entire area, but the fact that this one is fully intact and the fact that um, some oil was still being supplied uh, through this hole, through this banjo bolt, um, I think I've gotten away with it. I don't think there's any kind of damage here at all. I was comparing it to the opposite side and again, it's much the same kind of story. So uh, I think this is one of these stories where I've just got really, really, really lucky. Um, just checking 
chain tension here everything seems good but i mean there's not much room in this area for play anyway i think there's a better indicator if you've got the lower covers off yeah but the plastic uh, chain guides are absolutely fine um and i was actually only commenting to a mate the other day just in regards when you're filling the engine with oil you always kind of imagine that you're pouring the oil straight into the middle of the block where in fact as you can see it's just completely hollow and the oil basically comes in here and runs down oh my microphone wire is stuck straight down the front of the the front kind of chain cover and just goes all the way down the bottom and uh, into the actual oil sump so that's basically where the oil goes yeah um everything looks really really good this is 133,000 miles really really happy with this again the oil is quite dark but uh, I'm actually going to do two flushes of oil. Well, one flush and then the next is going to be the actual proper oil. We'll get this whole thing cleaned up. So here you can see I'm just about to use an orbital sander on this valve cover. Uh, just basically to strip away the old original silver paint. It seems to have a very thin layer of silver paint, uh, which is comes off pretty easily as you can see. I think this is either it's an 80 grit or possibly a 120 grit. I think it's a 120 grit pad I'm using. Uh, and you'll see later on, I actually swap between uh, different grits to get a smoother finish. So it's pretty effective at removing the paint, and I can use it on, both on the actual face of the valve covers and on the sides as well. So you can see here I'm after making an editing mistake but it kind of shows what I did anyway after I sanded back the covers, got the degreaser out again and basically just cleaned up in and around all the bolt holes, uh, got rid of all the sanding dust and also it was a good opportunity to get rid of these hardened grabbits as well um, which were very much perished and had to be replaced anyway. Oh shit, you don't want this to fall inside. Deep it in one piece. So this looks kind of crazy spraying the valve covers in the dead of night uh, in low light but I actually had a lot more light than it looks like here and um, uh, it's just the angle the camera's at. I could see plenty here at night time. It was also a very mild night and it was about 13-14 degrees celsius so uh, it was a good opportunity to get the spray painting started. Uh, and then obviously the next day I put on coat number two um, in the sunshine here which you'll see so uh, it was a good opportunity to get uh, coat number two on and the finish came up really good okay so i have the car in the air this is the first time i've actually had it up it's only up as far as the jack stand allows, but I just spotted this. I've only driven this car, like I said, about three miles. But uh, yeah, broken spring here on the right-hand side. Absolutely completely sheared off, as you can see. The caliper there catching a bit on the right side. And then on the left side, pretty much the same story with this wheel. But not too bad. And the spring is actually fully intact there, but very, very rusty. And the reason I have the car in the air is because I need to get at the oil sump. Ugh. 
um, and it's quite a bit of oil leakage here as you can see on the bottom of the sump there's the drain and we have rust a lot of a lot of surface rust some of it maybe a bit more serious than that though there's the back of the caliper there's the shock and just the salt roads in England just absolutely destroy these cars sheer amount of rust and on the right side as well there's a few new components there as you can see that lower control arm looks fairly fresh uh, that brake wire as well uh, the brake hoses as well are, are quite fresh they're definitely not original they've been done I'd say in the last decade or so as you can see there um, everything else yeah so a lot of oil as you can see nastiness right I'm gonna get started on this sump as you can see you've got all the bolts all the way around the perimeter there yeah, so I'm going to drain the oil and let's see what kind of condition it's in. It's going to be like treacle. Okay, right, time to get this clean. There's a bolt in here somewhere. drain bolt okie doke here goes nothing of course the engine oil isn't warm in the slightest so it's going to be thicker than normal it's always a guessing game where the oil is going to land That's the one benefit from having cold oil, is it's much more predictable and less messy. That is black oil. So I think that's 99% of the oil removed. I'm gonna plug this up and I'm gonna start removing the bolts of the pan. So before we take a look at the engine, uh, this is of course the oil pan um, and I suppose, well, there's not much to see here really, but the good news is there's no uh, filings or bits of chain guide or anything like that just sitting in the bottom of the pan, which is good. And um, some very black oil, obviously. Um, and we have the gasket here. Hard to tell if this has ever been off or not. Um, but the gasket is, yeah, not in the best of condition. Um, and then we slip underneath the car. And this is of course the oil pump, which is chain driven. And everything looks relatively clean, you know, and the mechanical parts do. Um, the actual inside of the case, there's a little bit of sludge build up. And there's quite a bit of build up on these components. Yeah, but you know what? I don't think it's actually that bad. There's nothing really coming off there, it's maybe just staining. Um, but yeah, there's actually a fair bit of slack in this chain. Now there's actually ordinarily supposed to be some slack. I think it's plus or minus 
as well 10 mil of slack plus or minus one to two mil but i think that's more than 10 mil uh, of movement it's fairly wobbly uh, but all you have to do here it's an interesting design you basically have a chain tensioner here so you remove this bolt and there's actually an allen screw inside here so you stick an allen key up once you have this bolt removed and you can uh, basically adjust the chain tension presumably just pulls the whole oil pump downwards and that applies more tension to the chain itself so um yeah so you can see the underside of the crank there which is pretty cool um can't really tell much else from this angle but yeah, I'm relatively happy with how that looks. Done. Right, so here you can see the finished paint job on both the valve covers and the actual uh, sump as well. Uh, the sump came out pretty well, didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. I mean, it's at the very bottom of the car, it's never going to be seen, but I just wanted to give it a bit of protection as well. So as you can see, I used the black enamel uh, spray paint. Uh, it's high temperature as well. And then you, obviously you can see the valve covers here, which came out really, really well. I'm really happy with the finish on these. And again, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. Um, I didn't use an etch primer or anything. This can be used directly on metal. Um, so as you can see, I paired back the metal in the video. Um, and then that's the actual finish. That's a very high temperature, uh, 800 degree paint. Um, again, didn't spend a huge amount of time on it. You can see the small little imperfections just around the actual bolt holes. But I mean, the size of the intake on the M70 is so, so big. You, you can't even see in between all the holes. You can't even see the valve covers. So, I mean, this is like a 98% perfect job uh, and it's more than sufficient for uh, just giving them a general clean over. So yeah, really happy with the finish on these. I think the covers and the sump came out pretty well. Right, the next task at hand is to get um, this AC condenser out and to get this oil cooler out um, because I have a new cooler on order as well as a new condenser. Um, and to do that I need to remove these cowls first so there's a bit of tinkering to be done lower down there's some rivets to be removed once I get them out and a few other bits these should slide out and I should be able to disconnect the condenser from the oil cooler let's get to it
There we go. Right, so the next bit we have to sort is removing that clip there and removing the rubber piece that's above it. So this clip and this rubber piece and the same on the right side. And this is basically locking up. There you can see obviously the back side of the condenser and the cowl on the right side, cowl on the left side. So we're gonna try and remove these. They should come off relatively easily. He said knowingly. No. Need some help from Mr. Screwdriver. clip okay that even force just a bit of persuasion to get it going and then I can pull it free which is much easier to do with two hands and that's one side done let's do the other right so with all those lower bits removed I'm hoping these just slide up and outwards, let me start with this one actually. Yes. So that's what this rubber piece does, it basically slides down over uh, this radiator bulkhead. Now, there is a cable passing through this one, so I'm not sure how this works. So this needs to be disconnected. Alright, so that disconnects. The cable needs to be clipped. Well, not the cable, the tie wrap. That's not clipped off. tie wraps in here. Right, now I can start feeding the cable through the grommet, through the cowl. This is one of those really crappy jobs. Can I pop that grommet off actually? Okay, that's the grommet loose. Right. Okay, so that's the condenser loose. And I don't want to move it anymore because these pipes need to be undone first. Okay, so now that I have the condenser disconnected, as you can see, I need to get both of these couplings disconnected. So that's obviously the inlet and the outlet of the actual AC. Um, so you have a line that comes from uh, your AC compressor that leads into the condenser, then the line goes back out, goes up this pipe here, all the way back along the actual bulkhead, um, and back through the firewall into the uh, evaporator and then back out again. So um, I need to get both of these cleaned up, um, and then I can start removing them. Okay, so that's the connections all cleaned up. Uh, hopefully they crack pretty easily. Two Allen bolts. Alright, that's one. There we go. Can 
minutes are about hit the state of that. That is in a bad way. So there's O wings in here, these need to be replaced. Well actually sorry, the whole condenser is obviously being replaced. Uh, and I need to get some new O rings for the new one as well for these connections down here. So so I need to get this fan removed as well. Now while I'm here, I might as well just show you the collection of parts that I'm accumulating here. So there are the old valve cover gaskets, a collection of bolts here from uh, the sump, a whole pile of other, uh, actually from the valve covers, the actual bolts there, all the ignition leads. I've got a brand new set of ignition leads on the way from Japan. Um, we've got the intakes here as well. There's going to be a fair bit of cleaning up required on them. We've got oil rails on top here. We've got the central acoustic cover. These are, uh, that's the oil filler cap. Well, that's the cap obviously and that's the actual neck uh, and then the shroud that sits in front of it old water pump here that has to go back to bmw as, as part of the exchange program they have for new water pumps so i'm getting a new water pump and they get this one back an uh, old thermostat got some uh, idler tensioners there and um, that's obviously the crank uh, sorry the vibration damper pulley as well there and uh, some uh, miscellaneous shroud parts that's the front shroud that sits above the radiator that's the rubber piece that sits uh, in front or yeah in front of the throttle bodies uh, got the fan and the shroud this is the aircon condenser that's basically come out and then we have all our injector rails down here the uh, radiator throttle bodies uh, we've got the air filters as well an old battery there too we have the air duct um, uh, where the air filter basically sits and we've got central coolant pipe as well. Uh, I did actually a quick paint test on this old pipe because it's getting replaced anyway, just to see what the silver looked like. Um, and we've got the engine um, hoists there as well. Uh, so yeah, the parts are starting to build. So I'll see you guys in the next video.